Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope all of you are excited to know something new. And believe me, by the end of this video, you must have learned something new through this video. So let's begin. Guys, I hope you are aware of this live session schedule for RDSIB and NABAD. And if you are a new student, you can pause the video and check out the classes that we are taking live for RDSIB and NABAD and the respective times. This is the mobile app of ours, which you can download from the Google Play Store. Okay, so the very first question that we have here is, which airport has launched the beta version of the Digi Yatra application? So out of these options, the right answer is option E, Indira Gandhi International Airport or the Delhi Airport. Now, what is this Digi Yatra application? Digi means to digitalize. Yatra means travel. So is this app going to make you travel from the comfort of your home only? You are sitting in your home in Delhi and you will be travel, uh, traveling to Goa without visiting any airport. Is this app going to do that? No. This app is basically going to make your journey paperless. When you go to the airport, you have to produce certain documents in front of the security, right? Now, with the advent of this application, what is going to happen? You won't be, you won't be required to uh, produce the security documents because you have done the biometric verification here and when you reach the airport you just have to carry your boarding pass and your face because your facial expressions and your face biometric data would be verified at the airport at every checkpoint and this is the basic idea of this Digi Yatra application. Now you would be surprised to know this fact that the Digi Yatra application was planned even before the COVID. Indian government was planning to introduce this kind of feature at the airports even before COVID. And in the times of COVID, it, become, it became all the more important. However, now we are seeing the beta launch of this application. Now, what is the beta launch? Beta launch is the pilot launch. Okay. So right now, this, this facility is going to be launched on a pilot or testing mode. Right now, its test will be done on the Terminal 3 of this Indra Gandhi International Airport. Okay, So this is the basic digital Yatra or Digi Yatra applications function and it is only written here. So you just have to produce your face at the airport and your boarding pass and no other document would be required. Now, this application has been launched uh, in your Delhi, at your Delhi airport. It will be launched in this month only, in August only, in Bangalore and in Varanasi also, okay? And by the next year, it will be launched at Pune, Vichyavada, Kolkata, Delhi and Hyderabad. So do remember these um, targets, okay, in relation to this Digi Yatra application. Now, guys, this Digi Yatra application is administered by the Digi Yatra Foundation, which was founded in 2019. Okay, so the Digi Yatra Foundation is a joint venture between the Airports Authority of India and the different airport operators, like your Bangalore International Airport Limited, Delhi International Airport, GMR Hyderabad, Mumbai, Cochin International Airport Limited. So these are the organizations which are administering the airports. Okay in the respective places. So that is all about this Digi Yatra Foundation project and this is the uh, outlay of the Digi Yatra application. Okay, what is, is, what is it? It's airport security by biometric. For whom? Registered users. So you have to register on the application. If you are a resident of Delhi, you can avail this benefit right now. And it would be enhanced security and hassle-free transit because you don't have to carry the papers with you. And it would be more secure because now your biometrics are going to be verified. Okay, moving to the next question. Which insurance company has partnered with the Union Health Ministry to help create digital health id for all in the country a very very important question because it is related to the government scheme so here what is the right answer it is edelweiss general insurance company limited it has partnered with national health authority which is the implementing agency of this mission the ayushman bharat digital health mission okay so all of both of these organizations are going to create the digital health ids for 
the citizens of India and th this Dig Ayushman Bharat Health Account is go is short form as ABHA and this would be a 14 digit number. So this is the ID and this ID would have a 14 digit number. So do remember this number 14 digit. It can be asked in the examination. Okay. Now J Satya Narayan chaired the committee which created the blueprint for the national digital health mission tell me when was this committee formed this is your question third third question is who heads the supreme court's committee on the distribution of freebies to voters during elections so here dy chandrachud is the right answer supreme court has created this new committee which would basically analyze and provide the recommendation on the freebies and probably on the basis of this recommendation you can expect a law regarding the banning of the freebies uh, during the election freebies are like the free uh, material or the free you can say the products or the lalach that the parties give to the general people to attract their votes so in order to curb that practice this committee has been formed and i hope you are aware of the role of freebies in market failure in economic failure and there is a very interesting article by cg cji nv ramana on the freebies itself i was reading that in the hindu today i would recommend you all if you get time to read that also okay there he suggested that why don't the government create an all party meeting and decide that they won't be uh, giving the freebies because that is impacting the economy so that's the basic outline of that article so you can read it if you get the time moving ahead which state ut is implementing the village defense guard scheme so here jammu and kashmir is the right answer now what is it village defense guard from the name itself, I hope you can get an idea of this scheme. So Jammu Kashmir has launched this scheme. So from the basic information only we can derive the objective of this scheme. The objective is to basically select the villagers, the villagers who want to volunteer in defending their own village. So villagers are the people who are uh, basically more acquainted with the new people coming into their village uh, with the new people crossing the border so in order to create vigilance within the villages this scheme has been launched i hope you are understanding the point so the villagers would also uh, protect the infrastructure facilities the villagers who would be appointed as guards under this scheme would also keep an eye over the trespassers who are coming into india through the other side okay Which state has signed an MOU with UK government for implementing the Shivning Marang Gomke Jaipal Singh Munda scheme? From the Munda word, it is very obvious it's Jharkhand. Okay. So, what is it? This Shivning scheme is not a new scheme or the new scholarship uh, program. It was already there in news in your April. I will discuss that. Why was it in the news in April? But let's first have focus on this current news. So basically, Jharkhand government and the UK government, both of them have signed an MOU so that the students of Jharkhand would get an opportunity to complete their masters in UK. That's the basic idea of this Shevening scholarship program. So obviously, scholarship would be given to the students of Jharkhand. That's the basic idea. And this is the name of this scheme, uh, the scholarship program. Shevening Marang Gomke Jaipal Singh Munda scholarship program. Okay, so this uh, program will be rolled out by 2023 and do remember five students will be selected for uh, the scholarship every year. Now, why was this Shevning scholarship in news in the month of April? Because an MOU was signed for establishing, this MOU was signed between India and UK for establishing the Shevning Adani scholarship on artificial intelligence. Okay. So this is a very important MOU that has been signed. Now it will allow the students from India to pursue their higher education in UK in the field of artificial intelligence. And that is why it was in the news. Now Adani group is playing a very important role. It is providing 200,000 euros uh, every year to support the Indian students who are studying their masters in UK under this program. Therefore, it is named as Shevening Adani Scholarship Scheme. 
Okay, one more thing has happened. UK has launched its CRISP M tool in Jharkhand. Okay, CRISP stand for Climate Resilience Information System and Planning. So from the name itself, what is the purpose of this tool? This tool is going to help Jharkhand in knowing the climate risk and managing according to the risk so that mitigation efforts can be enhanced. Okay, that is the basic idea. In order to boost the disaster resilience of the state. Now this CRISP M uh, tool is a web and mobile phone information system. So it is available on website as well as on application. And it, it was developed as part of the UK government's infrastructure for climate resilient growth program in India. Okay, now this CRISP M tool will also be put to another use and that use would be to support the planning, implementation and monitoring of the MG Narega scheme. So apart from helping in disaster resilience, it will also help in creating employment under the MG Narega scheme. Okay, that is the basic idea. Next question is, which state has launched an online monitoring system for medicines to keep track of availability and distribution of medicines in government-run medical institutions? So here, Kerala is the right answer. Now, there is nothing much to this news. It's just that an online system has been launched by the government of Kerala to keep the track of the medicines in the government hospital so that their black marketing and hoarding cannot be, uh, cannot take place. Next question is, which country has recently inaugurated a railway line powered entirely by hydrogen? Now, let me tell you that this is the world's first railway line that is entirely powered by hydrogen. So, which country is it? It is Germany. So, here, this railway line has been developed by the French company Elstom and it has given this uh, it has handed over the responsibility of this railway line to Germany. Okay, so that is the basic idea. Which bank has launched a new campaign called Vigil Anti to motivate citizens all around the nation to adopt secure banking practices? So here, what is the right answer? Guys, it is HDFC Bank. Okay, so HDFC Bank has two initiatives. One is this Vigil Anti. Vigilance is to be secure, to be cautious. So, Vigilante initiative is going to create awareness among the people so that they adopt secure banking practices, do not share their information with other people and use the proper channels for availing loans and every kind of financial service. So, all of that work will be done un under this Vigilante initiative. Now, there is Move and Rakho initiative of HDFC Bank also, wherein the awareness regarding the uh, awareness is created among the people so that they don't share their personal and uh, very crucial financial details with any other person, okay, like the OTPs and etc, etc. Next question is, which bank has partnered with the global escrow banking solution provider Kassler to offer digital escrow services for the bank's customers? So here guys, it is the Yes Bank. Okay, so it's a very basic news. This company, Kassler, do remember it is a global service provider, but it is based in India. So it has partnered with Yes Bank and they are now going to offer the escrow service. What is the escrow service? What is an escrow account? Okay, so escrow is, guys, the third party, uh, third party agent, you can say, or the third party institution. Now, what is this? Understand it from this example. Suppose this is a buyer and the, this is a seller. This seller is from India and the buyer is from UA. Now, this seller does not believe the buyer and vice versa. Buyer also does not believe the seller. So, basically, this seller has has entered into a contract with this buyer that now he is going to sell, uh, you can say, gold. Okay. This seller from India is going to sell gold to this buyer in UAE. But this is apprehensive. The buyer, the seller is apprehensive that the payment would not be credited to his account. Okay. 
and this buyer is also not sure of the quality of this gold so he is also reluctant to pay the seller beforehand so what are they going to do they would enter into a contract with this third party okay so this third party will take the gold and this third uh, and this buyer uh, will deposit the money okay so it will give the money to this um, third party agent and when the gold will be uh, exported to this buyer the fund will be released to the set this is the basic idea when the parties who are entering into a transaction don't believe each other they open a third party account wherein they deposit the fund and when the qualities and the standards of the contracts are met the payment is released okay the payment is given so this gold will be sent to this buy by the seller once the quality of this gold is assured this buyer is going to give the money to this seller now the money would also be uh, firstly deposited into the escrow account and then this escrow account would release the money to the seller so this kind of service would be offered by yes bank to its customers that is the basic idea of it okay generally it is used in the export imports and also you can understand it like an insurance however this is not an insurance it is very different from insurance because here the money is deposited by the buyer and this is just transferring the money to the seller it is not providing any kind of risk uh, so, uh, risk protection i hope you have understood the escrow account and if there is any kind of doubt that you are not able to understand you can ask me in the comment section below okay moving ahead the last question is who has been appointed as the brand ambassador of the pet care brand heads up for tails so here the right answer is kriti sen she has been appointed as a chairperson sorry brand ambassador of this new uh, heads up for tails organization so here guys this video ends i hope that you have enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching it